It's another gorgeous day. Great day. Jeez, yes. All right. There's Susan. She's singing for us today. Yay. And we have a visitor, Yvonne. Nice to see you. And Ronnie, good to see you too. <laughs> sort of. With your names anyway. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> All right, so, and for those of you on uh, Facebook, welcome to you too. So let us begin, uh, Mike. Yes, I will. Yes. Yes, I will. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. We are the Center for Spiritual Living, West Georgia. We study and practice the science and philosophy of the mind we know as God. And with our spiritual presence, and our participation in our service this morning, we can create a higher state of consciousness and rise above any negative energy that has prevailed this past week and manifest love. Throughout the past week, Reverend Sandra Jackson has provided us daily inspirational messages. And at this time, Reverend Dr. Sandra Jackson will proceed with our service, Reverend. Okay, thank you, Mike. Good morning, everybody. Once again, it's so good to see everybody. And I'm glad to see that you are all here. You're healthy, you're whole, and you are knowing the truth of who you are. So let's just turn within and close our eyes and take a moment to just simply come together in a, in a oneness and a unity and a wholeness and recognize, realize, and know that in this very moment, regardless of where we are, regardless of who we are, regardless of what our circumstances are, the truth of who and what we are right here, right now, in this very moment, is spirit, is perfect, whole, and complete, omnipresent God, moving in us, through us, and expressing as us. It is the very truth of who we are. It is our very being. It is the breath that we breathe. It is the life that we live. It is the wholeness in which we all live and move and have our being. And, so, and although we may be separate bodies in separate places, we are one. We are one in spirit. We are one body in the spirit and life of God itself. And so in this moment, we recognize this, we realize this. And so we make wherever we are sacred space. Wherever we stand is holy ground. For being the expression of God in this world, we are bringing that life that is God into expression. And so therefore, wherever God is, we are. And wherever we are is holy ground. And so knowing this is the truth and understanding and accepting it, we come together this morning in joy and in love, knowing that the truth of who we are is true for each person that we are involved with, engaged with, and in life with. And so it is. Amen. Okay, so let us get started with, what do we do next? Okay, I forgot. <laughs> our, our, uh, our um, Marsha, with our vision, our mission, and our declaration of principles. Okay. Um, there it is. Okay, our vision and mission statement. TSL West Georgia is a joyful global community where everyone belongs. Through our unique spiritual teachings, we provide a safe environment to experience compassionate living. And our declaration of principles, I believe in the unity of all life and that the highest God and the innermost God is one God. There is one life, which I am a part, one intelligence, which I use, one substance, which takes form as my life. Okay, thank you so very much. And this morning, Susan is back to sing for us. Yay! All right, take it away, Susan. Hello, thank you for having me again. Here's a sing-along for everybody. Please sing along. Take a breath, sit up in your chair. Take a breath, breathe in. 
Breathe out, and this is a song you will all already know. Needs no introduction. It goes. Day by day. Thank you. Beautiful singing, everybody. Good morning. Thank you so very much, Susan. That's so great. It's so nice, you know, we miss the sing-alongs, you know, we, with the Zoom, it's kind of hard to do our uh, congregational songs like we do when we were together. So thanks a lot, a lot Susan. But the, the nice thing is that you can sing at home and it doesn't matter what you sound like. <laughs> All of those of you go like, oh, I don't sing, you know, well, guess what? You can sing at home and entertain yourself. <sighs> okay, this morning's reading is by Sandy. And by the way, Sandy is always looking for volunteers to read, so be sure and check with her. You have to unmute yourself. It's on my... Uh... <laughs> Arrow. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. This is a story from Buddhist traditions. A young female disciple undertook to develop the meditation on loving kindness. Sitting in her small room, she would fill her heart with loving kindness for all beings. Yet each day, as she went to the bazaar to gather her food, she would find her loving kindness sorely tested by one shopkeeper who would daily subject her to unwelcome caresses. One day she could stand no more and began to chase the shopkeeper down the road with her upraised umbrella. To her mortification, she passed her teacher standing on the side of the road, observing this spectacle. Shamefaced, she went to stand before him, expecting to be rebuked for her anger. What you should do, her teacher kindly advised her, is to fill your heart with loving kindness and with as much mindfulness as you can muster, hit this unruly fellow over the head with your umbrella. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> See, the moral of the story is wherever you come from, come from love. Right? Well, today our topic comes from a, a, a definition 
or a statement from Brene Brown. She says, spirituality is recognizing and celebrating that we are all inextricably connected to each other by a power greater than all of us. And our connection to that power and to one another is grounded in love and compassion. And so that's why the master said, ground yourself in love first and then hit the guy. Well, why did you, what she, he's saying is ne not necessarily, you know, we don't necessarily have to be violent with people, but we don't need to stand for their being abusive to us or unkind to us. And nowadays we would call that sexual harassment. So he's saying, you know, you don't have to tolerate this stuff either. So um, in 1947, in Egypt, in a cave, some uh, people found, uh, were looking for, uh, you know, a place to stay that was warm. And they found a bunch of rolled up uh, uh, papers, they thought were papers, and they burned some of them thinking that they were fuel. And then somebody noticed that they had writing on them and they stopped. As it turned out, those were the Nag Hammani scriptures written by the, uh, well, the place they found it was Nag Hammani in Egypt, but uh, they were scriptures written by the Gnostics uh, shortly after the death of Jesus. And so they'd been hidden away all these years in this cave and one of the, they've translate, translated them, and one of the books that they've translated them is called The Gospel of Thomas. And in The Gospel of Thomas, there are only like 114 verses. But the third one says this, well, no, the 25th one, I'm sorry, the 25th one says this, love your brother like your own soul, cherish him like the apple of your eye. That is like what Brene Brown is saying. We're all connected. And, and Jesus is saying, love your brother like your own soul. Like if you love your brother, the other person, like you love your own soul, like you love yourself, then the, there's, no, there's no distinction between the love you have for another and the love you have for yourself. And, and so, but we at the same time live in a world where we are really being encouraged to fear one another. We have images all the time given to us of people who we should be afraid of. And we are taught very often to be afraid of the stranger. And so I want to tell you a story about something that happened to me. Several years ago, I went to Chicago for a workshop and it was like several days long. Like, uh, like I went Friday and came back Sunday. So I had an overnight case and I flew to Chicago to O'Hare and then I took the train from um, from O'Hare Airport to my d destination. Anyway, in the in the midst of this, I had to change um, I had to change trains, and the changing of the trains required changing of the stations, and changing of the stations required going down some stairs. And at the time, I had a problem with my right knee. Both the knees were acting all that great, but the right one in particular. And so anytime I saw stairs, it was like, no. And so, but I had these stairs to go down. So, and I had already walked a long way. So my legs were tired, my feet were tired, my knees were hurting, and I had to go down these stairs. And so I'm going down one step at a time. And a young man comes along. Now everybody, you know, this is Chicago. People, it's the middle of the day. People are rushing. And so they're just pouring past me, right? Just running around me. And finally, this young man comes down, I'm like three, four, well, maybe I was less than halfway down. And this young man comes along and he says, can I carry your bag for you? And I, this is a stranger. What, what do you think goes through my head? Am I gonna get my bag back? <laughs> this is Chicago. What have we heard about Chicago? Nothing but criminals in Chicago, right? And so I'm like, what and so my mind is just like going 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 but i don't have time to think about this for a long time because i'm taking you longer i'm taking longer to tell you this story than it did to run through my mind so i decided you know what my knee is hurting just trust them because 
I am always, God is always protecting me. I am always safe. I do not have anything at all to worry about. And so he not only took my bag, but he gave me his arm. And I had the railing on one side, his arm on the other. And I walked down the rest of the stairs. And when we got to the bottom, he handed me my bag, said, have a nice day, lady, and was gone. I couldn't tell you what that young man looked like today. But at the same time, he was one of those people who we are taught to be afraid of. He's a young black man with dreads. And we are taught to be afraid of those people. But they're not necessarily scary. They're not someone who's fearful. Here's a young man who looked at another person and said, I can help this person. Now, I don't know if he looked at me and thought that's my, my mother or my grandmother. It doesn't matter. The point of is, is there was a connection made between two people who don't know each other, who didn't know each other, and yet at the same time, we walked together for those few steps. I got the help that I needed. I didn't have to pay for it. And at the same time, I was safe in the whole thing. But we don't walk through the world in safety, do we? Think about that. Most of us walk scared. And so I want to ask you this question. It's a very important question. Who benefits? Who benefits of your being afraid of one another? Who benefits our being fearful of one another? I don't think we think about that. I mean, it just occurred to me this morning. It was like, you know, somebody has been, if, 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 if we are being encouraged to be afraid of one another, then someone's benefiting from that. I don't know who it is. And yet what Brene Brown is saying, spirituality is recognized and celebrating that we are all inextricably connected. So if we're connected and we are connected by the power of love within ourselves, okay, then who is it that we are to be afraid of? Because the stranger is filled with love. This young man was filled with love. Now he may not have called it love. He may not have called it. He may not have, he, he may have just called it helping another person. It doesn't matter what we call it. The action was one of love and care and support and help and service and compassion, okay? So we have to not only be willing to give it, but we also have to be willing to receive it because I could have looked at him and go like, I don't know you, get away from me, right? I could have done that, but I didn't. I opened myself and two people who do not know each other shared a loving experience with one another. And so that becomes something that we've all experienced at one time or another, but we forget it in the face of being told that somewhere, somehow, there are strangers of which we need to be afraid. I want to tell you a story, Rumi, um, likes to tell stories. And this is the story of the deaf man and his sick neighbor. Uh, this man was losing his hearing. And for some time, he was too proud to admit that he had this disability. And so he con continued to pretend that nothing was wrong with him. Um, we've seen that ad on com that commercial on TV, right? <laughs> of the man whose hearing is, is going and, and, uh, and he doesn't want to admit it. So that happens a lot, doesn't it? So this man is not so an ordinary. So one day, a friend bumped him, bumped into him outside of his home, and he told him that the old man next door to him had taken ill, and that it would be kind to pay him a visit, as the man next door had no relatives to drop in on him. So the nearly deaf man somehow made out what his friend was telling him and promised to visit his neighbor the very next day. So how was he going to approach his sick neighbor, wondered the deaf man, especially now that he had become ill and weak and likely, able, and likely unable to speak only in a whisper. But there was no way out of it. Custom decreed that he pay the old man a visit and inquire about his health. He decided that he'd decipher what the patient was saying by reading his lips and responding accordingly. Nevertheless, just to be on the safe side, 
He prearranged his questions in his mind and his neighbor's probable answers accordingly. He decided that when he asked, how are you feeling? The sick neighbor would probably say, thanks to Allah, I'm surviving. Then he'd say to him, that's wonderful, thank goodness, and continue. What did you have to eat today? And the neighbor would probably reply, I had a lovely vegetable soup and a glass of cooling sherbet, to which he would respond, bon appetit, how wonderful. In addition, he would ask, which doctor has prescribed your medication? And the patient would probably tell him the name of the one of the local doctors to which he confirmed, fantastic, he's the best in the trade. Thus he encouraged by his plan and immediately went next door to pay his, his uh, neighbor a visit. He sat near to the old man's bed, which was spread out on the floor and kindly asked him, how are you feeling my dear neighbor? The old man, the sick man died, said, I'm dying. Thank God, the deaf man said jovially and continued with his next question, which he had daily, he had duly prepared. And what did you eat last night? Poison, retorted the old man, already upset by the first answer. Bon appetit, the deaf man responded, obviously. The sick man made even more the sick man made even more upset by the last comment, but his lips to stop, um, but his lips to stop himself from swearing at his annoying visitor. The deaf man, though, considered continued with his inquiries. Which doctor is treating you? Azrael, the angel of death, snapped the sick man. May he be blessed. His presence is always good news. Whomever he visits is cured of all his pains and aches forever. Unaware of the damage he had done to his sick neighbor's state of mind, the deaf man took his hand and shook it firmly before taking his leave, believing that he had done his neighborly duty and brought the sick man much joy and relief. That's how we sometimes relate to people. <laughs> we relate out of a sense of obligation. Obligation. The man did not go because he wanted to go. He went because it felt it was his duty. He went out of a sense of obligation. We cannot connect to people if we are connecting through a sense of obligation. So I have some questions for you about true connecting. And I just want you, as I ask the questions, answer them for yourself, okay? First of all, when you are with another person, you know, now think of it in terms of sometimes you're with people who are superficial relationships, okay? Um, and sometimes you are with people who are more um, personal relationships, shall we say, family members, friends, people that you see regularly or often or at least you know with some kind of regularity and have some kind of feeling towards um then there are other people who you meet on the street the young man that i met um you know on the train in chicago you know the person at the grocery store you know you have a superficial relationship with the person who when you uh you're sitting at a stop sign you look over and you see another car and the person waves at you or smiles or something of the sort the other day i was walking into uh, the target by my house and this young woman you know she was walking in around the same time as me and she looked at me and she said hi how are you today <laughs> and I was like oh I'm fine how are you I mean I had no idea she was going to speak to me I mean I go in and out of that store all the time and nobody ever speaks to me except the people who are there paid to do that so it was kind of a, a nice kind of connection right so that was a superficial relationship, but there was a smile and there was a connection, even for a moment. So as I go through these questions, I want you to think in terms of, you know, that whole range of experiences that you have and connections you have with people. So, first of all, is your attention in the present moment? When someone, for instance, when someone calls you 
and you haven't talked to them for a while, but you've been thinking about it. And when they call you, you go like, oh shoot, I should have called them. Your attention is not on that call. Your attention is being guilty about having not called them. So your attention being on that call is like, oh, it was so good to hear from you. It's been, it's been a while, how are you doing? Or whatever it is that you say. But you know, the thing is, it's about being there with a person, even if they're on the phone with you or wherever they happen to be. Being present with them, having your attention, being there with them, not if it's on something else, it's like, or sometimes it's like, oh, geez, this call, I don't have time for this. Your attention is not on the call. Do you see? That, that is something that we have to cultivate, being present with people. And even if we are only present for the moment, like this woman walking into Target, she was only present with me for the moment, but she was present. You see, and I was present with her. I wasn't thinking of anything else. Afterwards, it was like, well, that was interesting. But at the moment, it was just, hi, how are you? We just had this connection. So the next thing is, are you being yourself? Are you being honest and authentic? The man, the deaf man wasn't being honest and authentic, was he? He, he lacked honesty in that he did not tell his neighbor, I am going deaf and I can't hear you. He wasn't being authentic in that he wasn't listening to the man's troubles and problems. The man is, is, is having a problem and he's not there to help him. He's only there to what? Meet his obligation. He might as well have stayed away. He didn't, he upset the man. He didn't have him. Another question is, in a, in a trusting connection, now this, this isn't all of them, but in a trusting connection, can you be open with your feelings? Can you tell someone, you know, I'm sad, I'm unhappy, I'm having difficulties. Most of us hide the difficulties or the pain that we're having. We need to have somebody that we can share that with. Right now, people are experiencing grief. And even if you have not had someone die of the virus, the fact that you're hearing about other people dying of the virus or other things, because it's not just virus that they're dying of, it may bring back to you the grief that you have from a mother dying, a father dying, a sister, or somebody else. When I hear someone, my sister just passed away two years ago, my mother, my grandmother have been gone a while, but I'm still feeling that grief when I hear someone die. I can still feel the pain of that loss. So, you know, are we allowing ourselves to be there with that person? The thing about people who are grieving is very important. They don't need you to do anything. They need you to just listen, to give them loving, caring, compassionate, empathetic, listening, to be present with them, not out of obligation, but because you want to be there, to listen. And they may go over and over and over and over the same story, over and over and over and over again. And you, if you love them, you will just let it happen. They'll stop when they're finished. But grief takes, sometimes it takes a longer time than others, especially if we have unfinished business with the people. So you see, we have to do what? We have to be caring in ourselves first. We have to find that love within ourselves. We have to find that loving attention. That's what the the, that's what the, the, the reading that Sandy did this morning. What did the master say? Find the loving kindness within yourself first. Jesus said in the gospel of Thomas, you see the moat, that very small substance within your brother's eye, but do you see the beam within your own? Once you have extracted the beam from your own eye, you can remove the moat from your brother's. In other words, we have to take care of ourselves first. The deaf man, 
needed to take care of his deafness before he went visiting his neighbor. And the young woman, she was told to what? Be loving and kind. Find that loving kindness place within her first before she went to clobber the, the, the man who was bothering her. The Gospel of Thomas. Well, let me see. Let me ask you these questions. Do you have people in your life that you can have conversations that are important to you? Think about that. If you don't, you, you, you might want to look around to find somebody. See, because these are the things that keep us, you know, that, that keep us in isolation and make us feel lonely. And we're not meant to be because we're inextricably connected. And so when we reach out, and when we touch ourselves, when we touch others, we are touching the spirit within them. Do you feel listened to and understood when you talk to people in your life? Be they family members or friends or coworkers? Do you feel like you're being listened to? Do you take the time or you just, or do you have a, a, an expectation that they're not going to listen to you? So I'm just going to rush by this. And here's the other part. Do you take time to listen to other people and feel empathy and compassion? You see, sometimes we're expecting something that we're not giving. And so we have to be giving it and receiving it. Do you help other people out of unconditional goodwill? Are you giving, in other words, without expectation of return or reward, not out of a sense of obligation? And do you offer sincere gratitude to others and receive gratitude from others? Not the, I'm not talking about the superficial, thank you so much, you know, you open the door, thank you, and you walk by. But a sincere sense of gratitude that comes from a realization that you have received something. And it could be that you just received, you know, some love from somebody. Do you smile at strangers when you catch their eye? You know what, we, we, we avoid people's eyes, don't we? We always avoid people's eyes. What, what is that? Because uh, somebody who was it said, eyes are the windows to the soul, okay? So are we afraid that we're gonna be looking at somebody's soul? I know we used to, years ago, we used to do activities and workshops and stuff. And one of the things they used to do is have us sit for a minute, three minutes, five minutes, sometimes 10 minutes looking at somebody else's eyes into their eyes. It's like, do you know how hard that is? <laughs> But it just, you know, it just really, it really connects you to somebody else. But it is also, it's like you feel so exposed at the same time. So that's why you have to know yourself. Because if you don't know yourself, you're afraid of what's going to be exposed. You're going to be afraid that, oh, they're going to know that I'm not doing that well. Okay or whatever the problem is. If you look at babies, however, babies will look you in the eye. They will look you right in the eye. Do you smile as strange? Oh, look, we had that one. Do you, um, do you ever find yourself sharing an experience with others that involves laughter and good will? You know? We don't laugh enough, do we? We really don't. I mean, in, in Norman, I think it was Norman Cousins, who healed himself of cancer. What he did when he found out he had cancer, he just got all the movies he could find and played them and, and laughed and laughed and laughed and he laughed himself right out of the cancer. That's a longer story. But let me end by telling you this. Think about this. This is from the Gospel of Thomas. In the beginning, in verse three, Jesus is talking to the disciples. And uh, of course, they want to know where heaven is because that's what they always want to know. And so he says in verse three, if your guides claim the kingdom is in the sky, the birds of the sky will be there before you. If they say that it is in the seas, the fishes of the sea will be there before you. The kingdom, ready for it, the kingdom is within you and without you. When you know yourselves, you will be known. 
then you shall know that you are sons of the living father. But if you do not know yourselves, you are in poverty and you are poverty. Think of that. The kingdom is within you. And our Bible always says within, right? But in the Gospel of Thomas, he says, and without you. So it is within you and without you. So now keep going through the verses. And he gets to the, almost the last one. This is uh, 113 from 114. He says, his disciples question, when will the kingdom come? And Jesus answered, it will never come if you are expecting it. Nobody will say, look here or look there. Yet the kingdom of the Father is spread out throughout the earth and no man sees it. Think about this now. He's saying, a kingdom doesn't come when you're expecting it. He doesn't, it's not out there. Look here or there. And yet the kingdom of the Father is spread out. You can't look around and yet it's spread out. So what is he talking about? Because the kingdom is within you. It's within each of us. And we don't see it because we experience it through our connection and interaction with one another. Think about that. The kingdom of God is hidden within each one of us. And to find it, we have to experience it through our connectivity with one another. I don't know, but I, I, when I thought about that, it was like, that totally blows my mind. I just thought about that this morning, by the way. It's not something I've been thinking about for a while. I've been looking at these verses. I've looked at them and looked at them, and all and it just today, these two verses came together, the beginning and the end, along with our inextricably being connected. But that is very powerful if you think about it. You think about the connections that you have with people. When you have truly, truly connected with them, when you really feel a sense of unity with them, you don't you feel, I mean, I, just think about how you feel. And we keep looking for it. We, we mostly look for it in romantic relationships. But Jesus is saying, the kingdom of God is within you. It is not out there, and yet it is spread throughout the world and no man sees it. Why? Because you can't see within you. You have to know. You, you have to live it. You have to experience it. So you can't go to Mar-a-Lago or, or Puerto Vallarta or New York or Hawaii or, or Egypt or wherever you're going. You can't go there and find, you can't find the kingdom of heaven. You find the kingdom of heaven within yourself and then you engage it in others through your loving, caring, compassionate, attentive support. So let us take these ideas and turn with them. What a joy it is to know that all I need to do is turn within to find the power, the peace, the grace, the love, the joy, the goodness, the totality of all that I am and all that we are is to turn within to know it as who and what I am, and to know it as e who each and every one of us are. To know that every person that I meet in the street, every person that I see, that I think, that I feel, every person, whether I see them on TV or see pictures of them on Facebook or see them walking down the street 
or just hear other people telling me about them. And each and every person I encounter every single day has the light of divine goodness and God in them. That whether they know it or not, whether they're experiencing it or not, doesn't matter. The kingdom of God is with me. And it is up to me to see it. It is up to me to call it forth. It is up to me to heal myself, my own problems, difficulties, attitudes, beliefs, angers, upsets, in order so that I may have a clear path to realizing the oneness that I have with one another. And so as I speak this word for myself, I know it is the truth of each one of us. For each one of us right now can say, I am that truth. I am that light. I am the kingdom of God expressing in the world. I am truth. I am love. I am peace. I am joy. I am wisdom. I am creativity. I am the totality of beingness. And all that God is expressing in the world is being expressed in me, through me, and as me. And so as I know myself, I know others. As I know me, as I know me, as I know myself, I know everyone else. For the kingdom of God is within each one of us. And so I speak my word now and know that we each one understand our inextricable connectedness to one another. We release and let go of all the barriers and the difficulties and the fears and the angers and the anxieties that we have had that are interfering with our inability, with our ability to connect one to the other. We open our hearts and minds and allow ourselves to be fully and completely present in this moment and in every moment. And know that the truth of who and what we are is spirit expressing. All the time, every day, in every way, no matter where we are, awake or sleepy, in conflict, in pain, in grief, in suffering, in joy, in laughter, in happiness, it's all God expressing in us. And so we open our hearts and minds this day to fully and completely accept this truth, to know that it is who and what we are, and to be blessed because it is who we are. We are connected deep, deep, deep within ourselves to that truth, that spirit of who we are. And we are unequivocally rewarded for the, for the, for the, the work that we do within by having a loving, joyful relationships in our world. And so it is with so much gratitude and thanksgiving that I know that this is the truth of each of us, that I release this word now, knowing that it is manifesting itself in each one of our lives in the most wonderful and perfect way, that we see it, we feel it, we know it, we express it. And we are enlivened by it. And so it truly is for me. Susan. Breath of God, fill me with life, fill me with laughter, fill me with love that's ever after in my heart. Breath of God, show me the ocean that's within me. Show me the waves that ebb and flow upon the shore. Breath of God, breathe through me. Show me I'm one with you. Let me have fun with you. Breath of God, breathe through me. Let me dissolve in you. Let the world revolve in you. Breathe. 
Shine through my eyes and through my actions. Shine through my gifts and through the song that's in my heart. Light of love. Shine through the sounds of birds and children. Shine in the endless velvet world behind my eyes. Light of love. Shine through me, show me I'm one with you, and let me have fun with you. Light of love, shine through me, work through the songs I sing, let me see you in everything. Shine Thank you, thank you. What a perfect ending. Thank you so much. That just brings it all together. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, Marsha. Good morning. Um, before I start, I just wanted to say thank you, Susan, because you guys don't know this, but um, Susan shared with us that she wrote that song after she got word what of what you were teaching today. So that's exactly why it tied it all together because it was born out of your thoughts so susan thank you so much thank it, you. All together. it all works together it all works together, together. Yeah. yep yep it's all not right. about time or space mm -hmm. about spirit not at, mm -hmm. not at all okay whoops that's not where we're supposed to be <laughs> where are we going hello faithful We've lost control of the video. <laughs> all right, here we are. My time to share with you all the different ways you can support our ministry, um, support our center. Um, if you would like to um, donate through PayPal, um, I think I remembered to, to put everything in the chat window before I shared. So um, the link is there. The link also shows up um, in every newsletter that you receive. Um, you can donate via PayPal. If you feel more comfortable with mailing a check, that address is here on the screen for you. It is also found in every newsletter that you receive. And also, um, if you're an Amazon shopper, and I hear that um, Amazon's having their big old Prime Day showing up, so if you're thinking about partaking in that, please, please, please um, go ahead and connect with us through Amazon Smile because Amazon has their own charitable program and whatever amount you decide to spend with them, if you go through smile.amazon.com and you're connected with the center, they will then in turn turn around and give a portion of what you spent to our center as well. And just so that you know, um, I always put in the chat window a link to our YouTube channel. Um, We'd love for you to, if you're a YouTuber and you like to watch videos, um, the the live stream that shows up on Facebook, I'm also putting it on YouTube so you can share with your friends and go ahead and, and subscribe to our channel so we can start building up a, a, an audience there as well. All right, um, so here is our thought um, after um, we make our, our donation. I am grateful for the divine givingness circulating abundantly through my life, our community and our world. Okay. Thank you so much, Marsha. Okay, for announcements today, <clears throat> excuse me, we have visioning after service today for a few minutes. Um, it's usually over 
before one o'clock. Um, and um, we have been having some really interesting visioning coming about. Visioning is a practice, it's a meditative practice where we ask spirit to give us some guidance and we're doing it for our church. But it's also a practice that you can use for yourself. So I noticed afterwards that I did not last time tell you how you could do it for yourself too. So today we're going to talk about visioning for the church, but we're going to talk about visioning for yourself as well. So <clears throat> for your own experience, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and Sandy always needs uh, readers. Um, what happens with the readings is I make them up given the talks that we have during the month. I create, you know, go find all the readings and I copy them and, 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 and uh, scan them or whatever and send them to Sandy. So she has them all at the beginning of the month. And then when she finds out that you're going to um, speak or read on that particular Sunday, then she will send you the reading for that particular Sunday and you can practice with it during the time you have it. So if you are signed up to read the fourth week she, this month, she already has that reading. So you can take that reading, you can, she'll send that reading to you and you have from now until the fourth Sunday to practice on it, see? And then the day that you're supposed to read, you just come on the service at 11 o'clock and Marsha, make sure that you have the right sound and we have your voice and, you know, we don't have any problem. You're close enough to the mic and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So please do um, put your name in the chat and say, I'm ready to read and uh, put your phone number and Sandy will get in touch with you. Okay. Um, let's see. So we have visioning today. We have that. John Stringer is going to be our soloist uh, for the last, uh, the last of the month. And um, uh, Susan, you just outdid yourself today. So thank you. I don't know, you know, our music is just getting better and better. I remember the first week it was like, it was so hard, you know, we were, we were struggling so much with the music, but it's just getting better. Don't you think everybody? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's just getting so much better. So thank you so much. Um, I think that is all of our announcements, unless somebody else has something to say. It, and uh, so for you visitors who were, uh, still blocked out and we don't see you but we and we don't hear you but we know you're there thank you very much for joining us today and uh, we certainly hope you, you will come back and, and visit with us again um, and let's see uh, I think that I think that's it for today we have um, a video for you don't go away Marsha is going to play something special for us And feel free to sing along at home. In the name of love, with a heart of grace, overflow in us, decorate this place as it is below, so it is above. Always stand in the name of love.
Even with all the glitches, the message got across in the name of love. And so we have one final affirmation and we are done. Thank you all once again for being here. I love you. I bless you. And I know that the, only the highest and best is coming to you and coming from you. Okay. Thanks, Abe. All right. We go forth today knowing that we are God's blessing in the world. Only good goes from us and only good comes to us. And so it is. With much love. Take care. Have a great week. Thanks again, everybody. See you in a few minutes. If you're going to